This is how my van looked about a week after I purchased it. On the floor there, you saw some cardboard. That is actually a custom template that I cut in order to help me install the flooring with a little more precision. I recommend you guys use this method. Heck yeah, just cut my first piece. A little, little inaccurate there, but you know, it'll It'll cover up well with the hardwood floor. That one's a little bit better, but still a little bit inaccurate, but you know, it's good, it's good. This is half inch thick plywood. It's meant to be a great foundation for anything you do or put in this van. You don't need to screw or fasten it into the metal flooring of the van. That would just drill more holes and invite moisture to get in there. I took out the, the bottom of the van over there, the little rubber mat. And this little side plastic step border thing and uh, sprayed a little water in here I've been scrubbing it a little bit so it doesn't look near as bad but you can tell definitely some rust accumulated especially you know like around this shit right here there's a bunch down in there and uh, you know just little places around here and there you can see rust so drain her down just scrub her out not only does rust form under the mats kind of on the bottom that you really need to pay attention to, but mold. There was moisture under this rubber mat when I pulled it up. You don't want yourself getting sick. So take care of all that mold, all that rust. I'm kind of spraying down a little bit using like a scour pad, like kind of doing the first wave. Um, you can see it kind of pulls up a good, you know, chunk of this minor rust. You can see it really you know, kind of gets those started. For the heavy stuff, I'm definitely gonna be using some steel wool. The next step I'm doing is I'm taking this coarse steel wool. This is gonna help you on your last area. You know, just getting off all the, the remaining rust. Nobody scrubs like me, I'm the best. The next thing I did was I filled in the holes finally. Super jagged and I was having a really hard time uh, straightening it out. It is after all a dime sized hole. So what I did is I sanded it an inch in diameter kind of around it. Uh, same with this guy down here. Can't really see it because of the sunlight, but there's a little hole right above my finger there. Then what I did is I put Bondo over it. I waited for the Bondo to cure overnight and then uh, sanded it and spray painted it. And so this is kind of what we're looking at now. It's looking a hundred times better than what it did. All right, so now I'm putting the liner back in, the rubber liner. Uh, still got to bolt down the bulkhead, put in a bunch of bolts there, the border back there and all that, and uh, put in this uh, step plastic here. So that's the next step, and then it's on to putting the wood back in. All right, I'm starting to get the wood plank flooring all cut to size in here. Not gonna lie, this part is very frustrating, very difficult. What I decided to do is push the floor to one side. So it's got a solid edge over there. Started trying to cut a template with this cardboard. It was a real pain in the butt. Ended up going to newspaper. It turned out to be a lot easier, although still very frustrating and difficult. This is a scrap piece. This is what I got with the newspaper. Let's see how it goes. All right, finally got that piece cut. Pretty good, obviously it's never gonna be, never gonna be perfect. Yeah, turned out good, and uh, just moving on from there. I think that's one of the harder pieces to do. Over there should be a lot easier, and this will probably be very interesting. So, we'll see. All right, so I got all the pieces in, everything looks pretty good, and I wanted to show you guys how I'm making my templates here. So I'm getting pieces of newspaper, and I got a pen here, and I kinda just get them in the spot, get it in position, and then I take this, take this pen, I lay it flat and push it against, push it against the, there we go. So that kind of gives me a line right there. All right, so I cut it and that's how it looks like after I'm done. All right, now I have a plank here that I've pre-cut. I'm gonna flip it over like so. And then I'm also gonna flip this over. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a pencil and just mark it like that. And that's where I'm gonna saw it. I used a few black screws to secure the plank flooring into the foundation flooring beneath it. 
it's precision cut flooring and it's heavy so it's not going to move around at all and it's been great to finish the flooring all i did was add metal trim on each door opening of the van to do this you just need to go to your hardware store buy the trim buy a special metal cutting blade as you can see here it's specialized for cutting metal and it's very cheap then you just measure how much trim you need behind each door mark it with a sharpie and cut What I'm going to do is I'm going to start prepping the table legs. And so what I got here, these like two by twelves. And uh, anyway, I got some long boards and then I cut them down to size. I got two over there on the saw horses and then two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand them down. Get this Black & Decker sander here for 20 bucks on Amazon. One of the best purchases I've ever made. And it's an orbital sander. It's great. And um, so my last projects I did sanding in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sanding out here because I like it a lot better. Just endless ventilation. So what I'm doing is uh, orbital sander, taking it to these two by 12 legs. I'm going to start sanding them down in stages, starting with 80 grit here. And then I'm going to move over after I've sanded all four legs with 80 grit, all four sides on all the legs. I'm going to move over to 120 grit. Wait, nope, this is 120 grit. And uh, sand that down again, all four sides, all four legs. And lastly, I'm going to move to a fine 220 grit smooth. After I'm done sanding, I like to wood clamp all my pieces together and re-sand the tops and the bottoms. This helps them stand a little more even. Then I use a little water and a rag to wipe off any sawdust or anything left on the pieces before I put them in my van. Now I start to put pieces in my van without drilling them in. This is called a mock-up. It lets me double check my measurements. I put in this main support beam here. Sorry for the bad shade and glare, but I have an L bracket that I uh, custom bit here to connect to the wall of the van to give it additional support. That way up top it's really sturdy. And uh, down here obviously there's an L bracket, or a, a little L bracket. I gotta do the same on this side and put in this tabletop. In order to make the white plywood edges look professional, you need to iron on this white veneer. You just need an iron, a razor blade, some scissors, and some white veneer from your hardware store. Okay, just got the last of the table mocked in. You can see around the edges here, this is that veneer that you iron on. Makes it look clean, gives it a finished look, and that's that. Unevenness in your countertop can always be fixed with brackets underneath. Just finished up bolting in the last support for this thing up there. And so this desk is pretty much in. It's super solid. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I just bent that a little bit so I can try to fit it in here. There we go. Try to give a little extra support in that direction. There's that metal bracket I was talking about to even out the countertop. I also had to use wood scraps on top of the legs in order to even out the countertop and make it lay flat. Wherever you buy your plank flooring, they should also sell matching trim. I installed the last piece of trim here to cover up the exposed edges of the plank flooring, and I only had to use Gorilla Glue to install it, and it works and looks great. All right, so right now I am installing drawers. So I'm just kind of framing them right now. I got the sides and the little front support bar. I'm gonna add a back piece and lastly, a front piece that covers both of these wood pieces that goes all the way across. And there's gonna be three drawers, 14 by 14 square I started with. And I cut some sides. I think I made them five and a half inches tall on either side and just drilled two holes through the bottom. You don't need a ton of screws with these things as long as they're tight and secure. Honestly, the lighter that the drawers are, the better I find. They will support themselves pretty well once they're all glued together. It's kind of like Ikea furniture, you know? It's like a bunch of crap wood, but once it's all put together, it's pretty secure. 
All right, so this is what I do for cutting. I want to start off with these nine inches. Right there, you can see that that's marked. And I mark them a few spots throughout the board. Make sure they're marked at both ends here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this piece of metal, which I know is straight, and I'm gonna line it up with all the marks. And I'm gonna draw a line all the way across. There we go, there's my line. And now I'm gonna set this off just to the side, measure it, and use these wood clamps, one on each end. All right, now I got it measured out. I got my bar clamped down tight and now you can kind of see that the little groove in the saw lines up with the line anyway that way i can just kind of put both hands on the saw and just glide all the way down the railing and i know i'm not gonna go off on either side it's gonna be perfect so that's how i do it so i make my cuts so here are my three cuts stacked up and this is a method that i like doing that helps me be more accurate when I don't have big accurate tools. I mark them up and I cut all three at the same time. Now this is lined up with all three stacked. Now I got them cut. And the last thing I do just to really, really make it even and uh, make the edges a lot nicer is I take this sander to it, uh, 220 grit, and I just even it out. If it's pretty uneven or the cut kind of messed up a little bit and there's a little bit bigger grooves and I do a little bit lower grit and it helps even it out a little bit. All right, drawers are nice and solid now. Last thing I gotta do is take this here veneer, just like we did on the edge of the countertop, and iron it on all four edges on all three drawers. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, just got my first drawer installed. Of course, I gotta put the handle on still, and I'm not gonna bore you with measurements, but I gotta tell you a little bit just to kind of show you how I did it. So these brown support boards here are 27 inches long. If I wanted three drawers and I want them to take up a 27 inch space, that would be nine inches for each front plate. So, but I, I wanted a quarter inch space between the floor and this one, and then a quarter inch space between each drawer and the top. So that means at a 27 inch space, I have to uh, use a 26 inch measurement to divide into three. So that's what I did here. So you can see I have a little bit of a space down here and uh, it just makes it nice for, you know, gliding and whatnot. You can see the line in there. When I do the screws and do the pilot holes, I keep it right on that line and that makes it nice and even. The last thing I do is measure and draw lines where I'm going to drill in the sliders. This makes it easy to hold the drawers with one arm and drill in the sliders with the other. I was really happy how the drawers ended up turning out. I last thing I did was put in magnetic locks on the right side to keep them from flying open while I'm driving. So this is a last look at the van before we get into the electrical side of things. Perfect fit with the batteries in the cases. Super excited about that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the batteries out, put the cases where I want them, bolt them to the ground so they're not gonna be flying around when I'm driving, throw the batteries back in them, and then start making some wires. All right, before I start drilling, just to kind of get an idea, uh, don't do this, you might end up putting them too close to the walls, kind of instinctually trying to save a little bit of space, but if you do that, you're not gonna be able to put the lids on them after you're done. I'll mark them <clears throat> what they are, where they are with a pencil on here, just in case they move, pop the lids off, drill a bunch of pilot holes, do four screws in each corner of each case, and then we'll be good to throw these batteries in there. All right, guys, this is another one of those things where you get it done, you put them in there, and you're just thinking about it, and then you have to come back and redo it. So what happened was, in this one, there's screws in the bottom of it, but there's no washers. I went back and added washers to give it a little bit more support. Just a little thing, might be a little over the top, but whatever. All right, guys, I got the Rough schematic here of what I did for wiring up my van. And we're gonna go through step by step, hopefully inspire you to do something similar. 
and uh, show you what worked for me. And uh, so yeah, here goes nothing. Oh, keep in mind that I ran out of red line, so some of the positive lines are gonna be black. So keep that in mind. I'll try to go step by step to keep it as clear as possible. It might get a little confusing. So here we go. Main battery, that's what this is here under the hood, main battery. I have a, you can see the hollow lines here. Those are positive and the dark is negative. So positive line leaving the main matter, battery going into a 30 amp breaker. So that's what this is here. I have uh, a positive line, once again positive, even though it's black, coming off the battery, going into a 30 amp breaker. I have bolted here into this little piece of metal, wasn't really close to anything, it was a pretty good spot. I have it bolted there, and then once again a positive line leaving the breaker. So I try to draw this for scale, but there is a long line going from the breaker all the way to the back of the van going into a smart isolator. So any hole will do, but this is this might be a tricky part. Each each time you do this, if you ever want a line coming off the main battery like I did, there is you're gonna have to find a hole or some way to get into the cab, the main area of the van. Luckily, Ford had a hole down there, which you can see already installed. All I had to do was find it and pull a little rubber plug that was in there. Luckily, this one was nice and easy. So if you're working with a Ford Transit Connect, that's pretty cool. Yep, so there it is there. All right, so that's a positive line coming through the hole. And you can see it gets tucked up underneath this trim here. So what I did, pulled the trim out, stuff the wire underneath. So it's going underneath this so you don't ever really see it unless you're looking for it. And it uh, looks nice. So that gets tucked behind the seat here. It goes in between the bulkhead and the seat. Goes back around the drawers and then comes up there. So <clears throat> this is where I ran out of the red line like I told you. So I had to kind of splice it with a little metal piece, a little metal screw piece and put the two lines together and then heat shrunk it. And so this is still positive. So it's coming up and it's going into the smart isolator like I mentioned before. Most of them, when you turn on the ignition in the van, it just opens the circuit and allows flow to come through and uh, charge your rear battery bank. But I didn't want that because I read people, you know, uh, having some issues with that. You know, they wanted to make sure the front battery was, the starting battery was fully charged and getting all the attention from the alternator before worrying about the rear battery bank. That's what this thing solves. Once the front battery is 100% charged, it opens the circuit and allows charge to come through to your rear battery bank. So that's what that is. And then we also have a positive line leaving the isolator going into a 30 amp fuse. And that's this black piece here leaving the isolator, coming around, going into this 30 amp fuse. And then lastly, a positive line leaving the fuse goes into one of the positive terminals. So that's what this is, the 30 amp fuse, positive line leaving, reaching around here to the back corner, and that is a positive terminal of one of the batteries. And then a little extra, uh, the isolator needs to be grounded to the chassis. That's what the three lines mean, that's ground sign. Um, you can see this little cord here, that's what's going on here. This is reaching around and there's a little bolt. Oh, you can see it up there, right there. That was a bolt into the chassis and that is grounding. Um, actually, all these units, the inverter and everything, that is a little, that is the place I'm using to ground them. I, I chose these uh, fuses because they're manual. I want to be able to keep them disconnected at all times. It's just nice, it gives me a little bit more control. I can connect them when I'm driving and when I'm not driving, uh, when I'm parked for the day or whatever, I can just disconnect it and it's over. You got a positive line leaving one of the positive terminals of the batteries going into a 50 amp fuse. So that's what this guy is here. That's the 50 amp fuse. This is pulling from the opposite terminal. So we got that line coming over here into the 50 amp fuse and then a positive line leaving the fuse going into the positive terminal of this inverter. There's a couple red terminals. You can see a couple uh, positive lines and then a couple negative lines up there. And, uh, and then there's a little ground, little ground screw. That's what that little, little line is leaving it. That is grounding to the chassis. And then lastly, ground, or sorry, negative, from the inverter back to the battery bank. So you can see up here, negative, coming down, coming down here, and boom, negative terminal there. So that covers all the bases. Oh, and lastly, yep, inverter grounded. I already covered that little line going into the chassis. And that's that. So now I'm gonna turn it on just to show you. Boom, boom. 
We're good. So now this charger works. Anything I plugged into it works. This heat gun works great. And uh, yeah, that's that. That's how that works. So, oh yeah, just disconnect or turn that off. And then I'm done, boom, disconnected. No worries, we're good, all right. So now what I'm doing here, I got these lids here for the batteries. A cap on each battery will hide a good amount of the cords. So, however, to keep the terminals connected and the, the cap on and everything connected, I have to cut these little holes out of them. So what I'm using here is I'm using a Dremel tool I got off Amazon. Pretty sure it was like 20 bucks, comes with a bunch of heads and stuff. It's an okay tool, it does the job. And that's what I'm gonna be using. I cut one side, I have to cut the other side now, and then I have to do another lid. And I'll show you when it's all on there. Here's how it looks again when it's all finished. It works great, but you know, I felt like I could have made it look more professional. So what I ended up doing was moving a lot of the components out of the view of the customer, leaving the wiring the same, just changing some of the lengths of the wires. About a month later, I made a few more changes to the van, adding this white sidewall and white shelf. I used newspaper to get templates and custom cut these boards, adding some screws, a lot of glue, and adding this 12 volt electrical panel that you saw there. I connected these recessed circular white lights to that panel and then had a simple positive and negative line running to the rear batteries. To put those recessed lights in, all you need is a circular drill bit to drill the holes. So here's a final look with how my van looks currently. I'm sure I'll make more changes and adjustments in the future, but I love how it turned out. For anyone looking to do a project like this, just know it's, it's not easy, but just get out there and start. Don't psych yourself into not starting it just by trying to overthink it, try to overthink your measurements, do all these things. In all honesty, my van turned out a lot better and a lot different than how I imagined it when I started. I could have started a lot sooner and probably got to the same result, but I was too worried about getting the measurements right and trying not to mess up. So my advice to anyone out there trying to do something like this, just get out there and do it. It's very fun and very rewarding.